The entrance antiphon is on page 93 of your Magnificat for the memorial of St. Nicholas. I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will anoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We humbly implore your mercy, Lord. Protect us in all dangers. Through the prayers of the Bishop St. Nicholas, that the way of salvation may lie open before us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. And say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then, Will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared? Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, no beast of prey to go up and to be met upon it. it is for those with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. The sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. 
Our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits, and our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Behold, the King will come, the Lord. And he himself will lift up, lift the yoke of our, of our captivity. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, What are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to, one, to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God. And struck with awe, they said, We have seen incredible things today. The Gospel of the Lord. So I am wearing this vestment today because it's the feast day of St. Nicholas. Hence, we're not donning on the typical purple or violet color vestment. And I rated Father Andrew's closet, okay, it's vestment closet, so I hope this isn't too, too gaudy or ostentatious, but Tony loves it when we wear bright, colorful things because it shows up better on, on our Facebook channel or whatever, okay, so that's the, the rationale. Today, being that it's St. Nicholas Feast Day, 
I will speak briefly about him and how we associate him with wearing that red color that red color costume, okay? There is actually a connection. And then I will speak about, and speaking of giving gifts, I'll speak about what I consider to be very good marketing, first of all, by the prophet Isaiah. I think he's a very good marketer of gifts. And then the, ultimately the greatest gifts, one of the greatest gifts is what, what Jesus referred to in today's gospel. Regarding St. Nicholas, that he would be definitely third or fourth century, and he was a bishop of Myra or Mira in modern day Turkey. And yet we sometimes hear, to, hear him referred to as St. Nicholas of Bari, which is there, sort of southern Italy, right along the Adriatic coast, along, you can see the Adriatic Sea right there. So it'd be right across from Naples, from what I remember. What happened ultimately is that the Italian sailors during the early, during the, the, the 1080, around that time, because you already had the schism between the East and the West by that time. So they took advantage of that opportunity. And the Turks already were Muslims by then, okay, modern day Turkey. And so they took the relics of St. Nicholas and brought it back to Italy. I don't think the Orthodox are very amused by that. But the Italians probably refer to it euphemistically as, oh, it's just a holy robbery, okay? So something along that line. And so there is great veneration of St. Nicholas, even by Protestant countries in, in Europe. Now, of course, he was known for giving a, a dowry to young women who, who were too poor to afford one. It's that way they can get married. And then there was an instance of him raising these three little children back to life because some evil butcher had gotten a hand of, got a hold of them. So those are some of the stories. If you gave it a cursory glance at his biography, you would come across many edifying stories. But he is known as, in some circle, as Santa Claus, just because I think it was, would have been around the, the 1880s that here in the United States, he was drawn like that, and so that is the modern concept of St. Nicholas. Whereas we ought to recognize that St. Nicholas is definitely known for his edifying life, whereby he performed miracles and followed God's will. Regarding the prophet Isaiah, I wanted to mention that just because you have this beautiful imagery some of the words are not as accessible to us just because they are big words and so forth. But you do have the imagery of God restoring the deaf so they can hear, the blind so that they can see, the lame so that they can leap like a stag and so forth. And then you have the imageries of the places that are barren are now full of life and are lush. Okay, burning sands becoming a pool of water and so forth. And I think about how oh, he's such a good marketer of things that are to come because of the fact that he recognized we want nothing more than for to have our afflictions taken away. We who sorrow and mourn in this earthly life because of bodily afflictions or because of spiritual afflictions will have those things removed. That way we can be ultimately be happy. Any good marketer of a product and to sell it, you know you have, what you have to say. So let me digress and talk about how I can be a good marketer of things. So first of all, if young men out there, if I, they play basketball, look at what Nike did with the Air Jordan brand, right? We associate that, oh, it's not really going to improve your jump shot, but these young men think they will, and so they're willing to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for, for shoes. That's good marketing. How about if I were to say, okay, for all the women out there, I am fully aware that you love luxury brand handbags. Okay, there's a South Coast Plaza right there. I know for a fact that nothing would give you greater joy than if I were to say, let's hand out free Louis Vuitton handbags, for example, in purses, okay? Or as the French, you would say, Louis Vuitton, okay? If, if I say that, that's going to perk your interest right away. Yves Saint Laurent, okay? I know these things because I, I work with young women or any type of women, they love purses. Oh, 
there you go. And that, you know how, why that is? It's because there are very good marketers out there who know exactly what you want. Whereas if I were to market the one thing that matters most, which is the confession, I would do it this way. I wouldn't make it out to be some scary box in there that you go in, you have to be shameful and afraid and so forth. No. I would say that it is the greatest, one of the greatest gifts because Jesus wants to forgive our sins. And so you notice in the gospel, he didn't heal the man right away. He addressed what matters most, to have our sins taken away. And you ought to approach the sacrament of reconciliation during the Advent season with great joy and alacrity, as I would like to say. That's the word of the day for you. Alicer in Latin would be to approach something speedily and with joy. We ought to approach the sacrament of confession with joy, with alacrity, because of the fact that we are going to receive such a great gift, our sins wiped away. And that is something that fills me with joy every morning, recognizing that I can have my sins forgiven. So if I could, I would just pin down Father Godfrey and go to confession to him daily, if I could, just because of the fact that what a great sacrament. And that is good marketing for people out there who do not know the faith as well as you. You just have to recatechize them. Okay? You have to make sure that you promote the things that the Catholic Church possesses in a way where it's attractive. And you do it with joy. So as we may go forth, as we go forth this day, may we be reminded of what is truly of great value, even more valuable than name brand handbags, is the fact that we have given to us at this Mass the Holy Eucharist, and that ought to be something that you desire with great alacrity. Please stand for the prayer of the faithful. Let us join our hearts and minds as we offer our petitions to God, our Father. For leaders of the church, may the Lord continue to strengthen them in their efforts to help the people of God grow in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may God grant them fortitude in fighting for what is right and just in service to their constituents. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of worship, and we pray especially for Joseph Serna, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Lord renew and deepen our faith and lead us to greater joy. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those who are ill or suffering this day, we pray for the good health of Linda Pagel, that may God re renew them and give them consolation in moments of trials. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who've died in God's grace, may they be welcomed into the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, we bring these prayers before you. We ask that you answer them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of St. Nicholas, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of St. Nicholas, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.